When the PlayStation 4 and Xbox One dropped in November of 2013, it was a time of mass excitement for gamers and especially for sports gamers. Believe it or not, there was a time when we played games like this and we were actually asking ourselves how the graphics would ever look any more realistic. Well, okay, at least 7th grade me was asking that. And then NBA 2K14 launched on these new consoles and it almost looked as good as these cases you can get from athleticcases.com. Most of you have cases on your phone anyway, so they might as well look good, right? Athletic Cases has a ton of options with different player art from different sports, so if you want to try and save your phone from inevitably cracking in style, be sure to visit athleticcases.com with the link in the comment section and in the description. Alright, back to 2K14. When it launched, at least graphically, it was everything we hoped it would be. The lighting was beautiful, the gameplay improved by miles, and the exciting part was that it was just the beginning. We couldn't wait to see what the future on these consoles held. But as I sit here writing this, and all I've thought about as we've gotten to these PS4 titles is how massively disappointing they've been to most of us. Each year it seemed that the 2K community has lost more and more faith in this product, and the only reason it still sells is because it's the only legit title hoopers can play if they actually want to compete. And because of this massive shift in attitude towards 2K games, I sat down to analyze just why. Why does it seem that the majority of fans don't have fun with NBA 2K anymore? Because out of the 6 titles that have released since 2013, I can only think of 2 of them that have an overwhelmingly positive reception amongst the community. The rest were endlessly shamed during their release year and that's caused us to forget the days when we could play 2K for hours on end without getting tired of it. Oh and make no mistake, there were always issues we complained about, but it seems like 2K truly lost its fun factor throughout this generation, and I'm going to theorize why. First off, the question automatically comes up. If 2K isn't actually fun, then why do we even buy it? Who makes an effort year after year to spend money on a game they don't even have fun with? Well, from personal experience, let me tell you two things. One, I'm a hoops junkie. I watch basketball every day, I read basketball books, I play it with my friends, and 2K has just always been my way to virtually experience the game. So until NBA Live gets their shit together, I'm going to keep buying 2K to scratch that itch I have to play video game hoops. And number two, I actually do have fun with 2K. It just doesn't last very long like it used to. So when I was a kid, I could spend my entire weekend playing NBA 2K9 and just never get tired. These days, I'm good for about two consecutive games in my team or online before I feel like doing something else and then I'm gone. The answer to why that happens is what we're after. The first thing I'm going to talk about here is the fact that the same exact game modes have simply been done to hell on this generation of consoles. When they wrote their plan for NBA 2K14, they built the game around three main pillars, my career, my team, and my GM slash my league. Those same things have literally been the focus of every 2K game this generation, and quite frankly, I think they're just getting stale for a lot of people. My career follows the same basic structure every year. The stories are cringe, the gameplay is boring once you've upgraded enough that you're posting Wilt Chamberlain numbers with your point guard, and then you're off to whatever version of the park they've dished out for the year. And if we look at that in the context of a console generation, then it has to be pointed out that 17 and 18 literally had the same exact parks. 18 and 19 are different variations of the neighborhood, but I give credit where it's due. I like what they've done with it this year, and it's one of the things that actually doesn't feel stale at the moment. And while my team and the association modes always have some tweaks to them, nothing much has happened that makes an extremely positive difference over the last 6 titles. As a matter of fact, almost all of them have exclusively gotten worse because of microtransactions, and that's possibly the biggest part of all of this. I don't know if it's because of the shareholders they have to answer to or what, but 2K has been one of the greediest game developers of the modern era. VC was introduced in NBA 2K13, and it's not a coincidence that this is right around the time the series started to become questionable. I actually wrote this same thing in my article about the game in 2013 that VC would be the downfall of the series or something along those lines. But check out how VC has affected things since its release. There was a time in the series, I can't remember exactly which title, but basically what would happen was, everything would cost a lot but you could barely earn VC by playing the game. So your My Career contract would basically pay you pennies compared to what everything cost, which to their credit they did do a lot to fix in 2K19. In NBA 2K14, they were greedy enough to lock the superstars and blacktop behind VC. 
So you literally had to budget your VC between my team, my career, and fucking blacktop mode that's barely used anyways. There was a time when people's players would be like a 99 on the first day because they just bought VC and immediately upgraded everything which is the definition of pay to win. And VC is still rearing its ugly head today. You want to be decent in my team? Well, these packs ain't cheap, so you better be able to pour hours and hours into this game if you even want a chance to open something cool in a pack. Otherwise, you're buying. And just a note about that, I actually opened my first anniversary pack just like a week ago, and I'm talking about one of those that come with 20 packs, and I was getting duplicates. I was getting cards I already had. That thing costs like, what, 100k VC? So some kid out there who doesn't have money to go spend on VC and who, I don't know, who <laughs> some magic way he's earned it, he's possibly opening a pack that expensive to just get duplicates and maybe get a good card. But that's not the worst part. The worst part is that even though VC helps to have in my team, you can't even earn it when you do the main thing of playing people online. As a matter of fact, you can't earn VC in the mode. All you get is my team coins and you don't get a lot. So those my team coins you earn are split between opening packs and buying contracts. To have good players on your team so you can win and earn things in the mode, you actually need them to be on the floor. For them to be on the floor, you constantly need contracts. To get a lot of contracts, you either buy them or you play triple threat and try to get them at the end of games. It's a literal cycle that at some point requires you to reach into your wallet if you don't have all day to play this game. I'll tell you from my experience since I played my team the most this year, it's a very grindy mode. But it also doesn't make sense to me because they have that domination mode you play through to earn packs as well. That mode had potential when I looked at it, but it ended up being the most boring shit I've ever done in a video game. I'm literally blowing the computer out by 50 points every game so I can collect packs. There's zero challenge until the end where I'm assuming you play all-star teams. So for regular people who don't have time and don't have excess money, I can't even begin to visualize how my team could ever be fun for them because you need a lot of one or the other to progress through this in any kind of timely manner. In my career, it's not much different. Grind your player through his levels by playing against a Hall of Fame CPU that lost his teeth a long time ago and budget your VC between decent gear or your skills. Oh, and the gear is still at a pretty steep price, so even if you aren't buying VC to max your player out as much as you can, you're likely doing it for gear. And that's a problem specific to this generation of consoles. See, back when VC wasn't pushing them to be greedy, we had skill points. Don't you think we would have been having a lot more fun in something like the park if we were still using skill points and we actually had a way to earn a lot of it? And a fun way at that. Wouldn't a lot more people be motivated to grind if they knew their goals were realistically attainable? In a nutshell, that's how VC has hampered this generation's 2K titles. The common person has school, work, and just a life in general. So with no time, their options are to either pay or really just don't play. Speaking of that, 2K has very clearly chosen to focus the most on modes that can maximize their profits. Take the one mode that they can't monetize for example, Play Now Online. We're in January and the last time I checked which was a couple of weeks ago, there were only like 800 people in the upper ranks. That's because nobody is advancing this year. As a matter of fact, people really just aren't playing it. Play Now has either stayed the same or progressively gotten worse since they introduced it back in 2K16. It was one thing in those old titles when you couldn't see who you were playing, so you were just flying into these matches blindly. But this year, they went a step further to ruin it by separating the games you have to play to advance through each league by tiers. And in typical 2K fashion, they didn't even take precautions to make sure you really get matched up with a team of equal power. I've lost count of how many times I picked some regular ass tier 2 team and they've tried to match me with an all time team. And it's funny because the entire point of taking away the old team selection screens and introducing tiers was to make it so you weren't constantly playing the same dominant team every game. You know like back in 2K9 where everybody either used the Lakers or Cavs, or in 2K13 when people were using the Lakers and Heat super teams. But in doing that, there's a lot of matchups being created that are nearly impossible for the other player to win. And I haven't heard one word from 2K about this. And of course, I've saved gameplay and server issues for last and they literally never change. First of all, as early as today, I got booted from a my team match because of this lag episode that has been happening since the game dropped. The thing is, this specific episode where it like lags and then you keep moving and it lags again until it kicks you out, that never happened to me in 2K18. 
And furthermore, 2K is the only game I have a problem with on my PlayStation or Xbox. Every other game runs smoothly, and I know it's not my internet because server issues like this have been common in 2K forever now. These are never addressed as the only thing 2K tells you is to check your cables and connection when it's painfully obvious the problem is on their side. And that goes right along with the fact that every single 2K game has an array of issues. But the problem unique to this generation is that the issues have been the same. I keep a project file in my video editor so I can find certain plays very quickly, and I gave everything titles including the issues the game has. In NBA 2K19, I have tabs for missed layups, broken plays, bad directional passing, bump steals, and animations that might as well be tagged as glitches. Does any of that sound familiar? Literally all of it should sound familiar because either one or all of these have been a problem for this entire console generation, and probably even beyond that. Bad directional passing has been in all of these. I can't for the life of me figure out why they'll throw the ball across the court instead of to the guy that was cutting wide open. You actually try to use some strategy and run a play, and it'll just stay in place for like 17 seconds and disappear so you've lost the possession, that's not new. Bump steals were the devil last year, and they've recently come back in a big way for 2K19. And I'm still losing points because my 7 foot centers can rarely make a basic layup unless there's nobody else within a mile. Missed layups became a serious problem in 2K17 when they had to start timing them. All of these major issues have plagued multiple titles, and when you combine that with everything else that I've talked about in this video, you should see a nice picture that's come together about why this game isn't fun for most people anymore. Most of its main modes demand an extraordinary amount of your time for basic tasks, or they demand your money. The modes that demand neither have some tragic flaw that makes them nearly unplayable, and if all else fails, Old Reliable always comes through when those gameplay issues pop back up. Specific to 2K19, the gameplay issues have created a community of cheesers, which I feel like that's probably something I could have said for any 2K, so I don't know why I said just 2K19, but since I'm currently experiencing it, I will tell you that if you want to get online and compete, you have a great chance of just running into a guy who's gonna run JaVale McGee at shooting guard to force mismatches and cherry pick all four quarters. So as you can see, this was not a video solely about 2K19. I'm honestly kind of sick of making videos that just talk about why the current 2K is so bad because I feel like that happens every year. My goal was to show the issues that have flawed 2K as a whole for the last 6 years because if you can't see how the mood has shifted on these consoles, you're not paying attention. Every year it gets worse and worse, the community's attitude becomes more toxic toward the product, and you end up with a game people aren't even playing by summertime. See, the thing that I think about is how 2K on the PS3 was never straight up unfun, well, except for that one time on 2K13, but for the most part, the game frustrated us, it made us rage, it made us complain about certain issues, but there was rarely a situation where the majority of us weren't having fun. On the PS4, at least personally, I've reached a point where it's relatively unfun. I hop on the game pump to compete, I even have fun for a bit, but in way less time than it used to take, I'm ready to pick up Smash Brothers or something else. And if you need any more of an indication in how this game has fallen out of favorable opinion in the community, just take a look at Chris Move's 2K19 activity. He just now posted his first My Team vid. Back during the PS3 era, we couldn't wait for him to post, and he always seemed energized to post them as well. His video had these funny skits involving other games, and he always consistently played multiple modes. I don't know the man personally, maybe he's just getting older and busier, but I don't think it's a coincidence that as 2K has fallen, you have to go searching for his latest 2K vid. He's just one person, but he's pretty much the father of the 2K community, and I have a suspicion that he feels pretty similar to a lot of us. And that's all for today. If you somehow followed this channel, and didn't know that I had an even bigger one, make sure to go sub to Dom2K where I do more long form NBA videos. The link is in both the comment section and in the description. Hit the like button, comment, and sub if you enjoyed, and hit the bell next to my name if you want notifications on future videos. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you all in the next one.